Howdy gang, in today's episode of Pool School, I am gonna teach you how to replace the diaphragm in either a Barracuda G3 or G2 suction side pool vacuum. So let's get to it. So once again, before we get started, I wanna thank you for watching, remind you to like this video if you do, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and please share my channel with all your friends, everyone you know who owns a pool. Alrighty, so as I said before, this video is on replacing the diaphragm in specifically a Zodiac Barracuda G3 pool vacuum, but you can also use it the, the principles and the process with the Barracuda G2. The Barracuda G2 has been discontinued, so it's hard to get parts, um, but the G3 is still around, still my favorite vacuum uh, out there. Not the best looking, but for the money and for the uh, ease of, of operation and repair, it's absolutely my favorite one. Uh, you're gonna need, obviously, a diaphragm like this. The difference between this diaphragm, which is the G3 diaphragm, and the G2 is this end right here where my pinky is touching. Okay, and that little part right there on the G2 is angled and has a little tab that it has to fit into a little notch. But other than that, the whole process of doing it is the same. So obviously you're gonna need a diaphragm. So you can go online, do an online search for um, Barracuda G3 diaphragms. And they have aftermarket ones that are, in my opinion, I've used both. They're just as good and they cost about a third as much. So a lot of times you can get like a three pack of them and just hang and hang on to them in case you need them because the diaphragm is probably the thing on the Barracuda that tears or needs to be replaced the most. So with that said, let's go check out one of my clients who just put one in and he had a piece of something go through it and slice the diaphragm. So we're gonna go ahead and repair it and I'm gonna show you how we do it. Oh, really quick before I go back to that pool to replace the diaphragm. How do you know it's time to replace a diaphragm? Well, usually in, in the G2 or G3 vacuums, they have a popping action. It kind of goes toon, 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 and it kind of bounces around the pool. If that popping action stops or you see it vibrating like brrrr, then chances are you've got a torn diaphragm. If it stops altogether, it's one of two things. Either there's something stuck in the diaphragm, which you basically follow the same procedure to open it up and squeeze out the diaphragm and the piece drops out, or the diaphragm's been cut or sliced and you have to replace it. But that's pretty much how you know you need to replace the diaphragm or at least check it out and see if there's any obstruction in it. Alrighty, so I have already done a couple things. First, I shut the pump off to make sure that it's not running and that it's not going to turn on while I'm fixing this vacuum because I don't want the system to suck air. I've also disconnected the vacuum from the hose and I brought it out with me. I've kind of emptied it out. So this is your Barracuda G3. Remember, I have my diaphragm and I want you to notice something on this diaphragm. This one comes with a little, see that little white ring right there? That's a retention ring. Now, if yours didn't come with it, it's okay. The one inside, the torn one, should have one on it. So really simple steps. I'm not gonna mess with any of this. I'm just gonna take this little yellow nut right here and I'm just gonna unscrew it. That's the first thing. So I'm gonna screw, unscrew the, the master cylinder from the vacuum body, okay? Once I get that out, I'm just gonna put this down for now, okay? That reveals this to me, okay? So there's the end that I just unscrewed. This is your main cylinder. There's your diaphragm, that's this part right here, all right? So all I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna unscrew this bottom portion of the, of, the, of the cylinder, the main cylinder, okay? Set this down, make sure it doesn't roll off anywhere, and it's gonna reveal this to me, all right? This is what the diaphragm's gonna attach to. All I do is just push this through, wiggle a little bit, and out it comes, okay? and there's your diaphragm. I'm gonna pull this all the way out. You don't have to pull it all the way out, I like to. I want you to notice something. Inside there, you see that little gray thing, that little ring? You wanna make sure that you, when you push this back in, after you replace it, that this doesn't pop out. If it does, you gotta to have to just pinch it and push it back in, but try not to hit that like on an angle like this, try to get it straight in. So, I'm gonna put this down, and you notice, see the old one has a retention ring on it as well. But I want you to see where it's torn. Okay, I looked at this the other day, right there. So that usually tells me, usually if something goes up in here, like a bottle cap or something, it'll slice it or a sharp rock. That's the only uh, potential drawback to this kind of vacuum. But like I said, these diaphragms, you can get them aftermarket for pretty cheap. So given the, the ease that it is to replace these, not a problem. So I would probably use this retention ring on it. So all I'm gonna do is just pop this off, comes right off. And I am going to 
for your, I would suggest you take the retention ring off of the old one and save it because you never know when you might need one of these. And they're a little bit tough to, you know, they're kind of a pain to go order. So if you have one laying around and that way, if for some reason, the one that you use is cracked or cracks, you've got a backup. So just put it in a place where it's not gonna get deteriorated, okay? So this is my new diaphragm, very simple. You notice the end of this has a little notch in it. I'm gonna basically just put this over it and wiggle it and it's on, just like that. Now. Carefully, again, so I don't hit that little ring in there, I'm just gonna push this back through. This is the bottom that goes down to the, to the pool where the suction is. I'm just gonna push it, feed it right through. I'm gonna go right in, and I'm just gonna kinda wiggle it gently and nurse it through till this yellow lip, see that? Seats right on that blue frame. That's it, folks. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse the process. Take this slide it back up the sleeve, screw it in, not too tight, snug, don't crank it really tight, and then I'm gonna go back to my vacuum body, put it straight in the, the body, the master cylinder there, and just screw it down, okay? Now, once in a while, I've noticed that these, these can come undone a little bit, so this nut, I tend to screw it, I tend to crank it a little bit, give it a little bit of a tug or a squeeze to make sure it's tight. Don't grab channel locks and crank it down, okay? So that is it, that's how I do it. Now all I gotta do, take it back to the pool. I'm gonna put it in the water and submerge it so it fills with water, it's not much water in there. Attach it to the hose, fire it back up, and then I'm going to adjust the suction to make sure that it's not sucking too hard because that can cause uh, excessive wear on the diaphragm and it's not sucking so little that it doesn't get that popping action that a Barracuda G3 or G2 works for. But that is pretty much how you do it. Simple, isn't it? Now you know another reason why I like this vacuum. So gang, that is my video on how to replace the diaphragm in a Zodiac Barracuda G3 vacuum or a G2 vacuum for that matter. Like I said, the only difference is that little end that it's angled and it has a little tab and it has to seat into that little part at the end of that G2. But it's pretty much the same principle, the same way you take it apart and put it back together. It's pretty easy. Hopefully it made sense to you. If you have any questions or comments, remember you can leave them in the comment section below this video or you can email me directly and my email address will appear at the bottom of the screen as always. It's Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny, poolschool at gmail.com. Want to give a quick shout out to a company that makes this hat that I wear. It is the, it's made by a company called Sunday Afternoons. And I'm going to put a website address to their website at the, in the description of this video too, because they are, they, it's just such a great product. And um, they provided me with this new one to replace my old one that's nearly, uh, that's over 20 years old. And uh, this version is called the Adventure. So if you want to get a, uh, want to get one of these, it's really the best sun hat I've ever owned. And it lasts a long, long time, 20 plus years. That's a long time. Go ahead and check out their website. And uh, if you do decide to order something from them, especially if it's this hat, let them know that you heard it from, you heard about them from Pool School. Anyway, again, their uh, website address is sundayafternoons.com. So once again, thanks again for watching. Remind you to like, subscribe, and share my channel with everyone you know. And until we meet again, have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids and elderly people and pets around water, and I'll see you next time.